Welcome everyone, it's Friday and that means chat gauntlet day here on Going Optimal where I take on seven of my viewers, or in this case, in this case, seven of my viewers, one of whom is streaming, so streamer viewer, and we're going to battle in a best of one Zendikar Rising draft and we're gonna do it on a third party website called mtgadraft.herokuapp.com, which we will share in the chat, share in all the links and all the good stuff like that. But basically it is a third party website that allows you to draft magic uh, without having the cards, you know, it's just a draft system. But then you can take the resulting draft and export the results over to Arena and use the friend challenge system to battle with those resulting decks. So it's a way for players to basically draft for only f basically for free unless you don't have a lot of wild cards or uh, a big collection you do need to craft the cards that you don't have in order to be able to play them on arena but in a typical draft you know you get a couple of rares or whatever maybe a mythic and if, so if you just have a handful of of uh, craftable stuff you can usually build the deck you need to to build when you do these kinds of drafts and then it's a way to really eke out a lot of value uh, from your arena time. If you're just in it for drafting, it's a way to basically draft for free. And that's really powerful. And if you are interested in exploring that some more, please check out the Going Optimal Discord. There's a very active community of MTGA draft .heroku app drafters there and uh, pick up drafts start all the time. More scheduled stuff is uh, coming up, it is emerging as we evolve the Discord and evolve our use of, uh, of of the MTGA Draft tool. So please come join the Discord and check that out if you're interested in trying this yourself. But uh, for those of you who also are here for the first time, there's a few things on the line. And the nice thing about this structure, I, I play all seven of my opponents in a best of one. So we get a guaranteed seven game suite. And first and foremost, we're looking to see who can get four wins. Is Am I gonna win the week or is chat gonna win the week? If chat wins the week, we get to start asking how much they won it by. Because if they win it 5-2 uh, or 6-1, I have promised a reward of going to the arena store and buying some bling for future use on stream. And of course, if chat manages to 7-0 me, I have turned over control of all my hair above my neck, except for my eyebrows. They get to decide what my next haircut is. I do like to keep control of my hair, so my, my baseline is to try and find one win a week and also to try and have a good attitude if I find myself in an 06 hole, which one of these days I will and will test my ability to have a good attitude. But I, I, I think I've made peace with the, eventually, the eventuality of it and I'll try, I'll try to have a good, but it should be very rare. Like I think somebody did the math and if you consider me a coin flip in a best of one game and I'm playing seven of them, it's like, it should happen once every few years, right? So it's not, but that's not nothing. If I stream for a few years, it ought to happen at some point. So it's a, it's a thing to look out for, but mainly we're here for the fun of the week to week push and pull of who can take the four wins. And uh, once chat has earned the right to go to the store, let's see if chat, before that we worry about my hair, let's see if uh, chat can go to the store again first. All right, I think we're ready to hop over, of course, Though on my way, I'm going to thank my sponsor, Card Kingdom. Cardkingdom.com has nothing to do with HerokuApp.com here, but they have everything to do with making your tabletop experience incredible. Uh, they are the Heroku app, uh, MTGA Draft Heroku app of magic card sales. And I am really glad that they have been my sponsor for so long. They've been a big supporter of mine, uh, even back in my limited resources days. Uh, I've mentioned this a few times, but uh, Card Kingdom actually was the first sponsor of limited resources way back in like 2010. So in a sense, uh, Card Kingdom has been supporting my content for over a decade. We just took a pause while I went to work for Wizards of the Coast and I want to remind you that if you go there via my affiliate link uh, in the panels below in chat here or in the show notes of the YouTube video, it assigns all of your activity on Card Kingdom to my uh, sponsorship and helps me stay on the air. So if you're ever feeling the need to augment your tabletop game with stuff, please give Card Kingdom a thought. And if you decide to give them your business, remember my precious affiliate link, right? 
Right. All right, this is straightforward though. We're gonna draft here and then we're gonna kick it over to Arena and battle it out there. So I'm gonna wait for uh, Mr. Grim Pac-Man, who is our Q leader here to give a ready check. And if we're all ready to go, the draft will fire away. And then uh, uh, we will start making picks. My seven drafters have disappeared, I'm sure, and are not watching the draft, but they're welcome to come back and watch deck building. I don't mind that. But here we go. Zendikar. <clears throat> Let's zoom a little bit, give people a... Uh, yeah, four wide is good. I think people can kind of read there. We have a Thieving Skydiver at rare, 2 1 flying for two. I already like that, but what else does it do? Kicker, kicker can't be zero. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, gain control of target artifact with converted mana cost X or less. If that artifact is an equipment, attach it to Thieving Skydiver. Well, I like blue, and that's a solid two drop, a reasonable place to start. But Umara Wizard is a very powerful spell land. Thing is, there's a lot of uh, there is a lot of equipment in here. We have a Royal Eruption. This is a powerful pack. Royal Eruption is good. Bubble Snare is good. Visionary is good. Uh, Shepherd is good. Thundering Spark Mage is good. Vastwood Surge is good. Wizard is good. Rare is good. Bug Catcher is good. There's like Gloom Hunter is good. This this pack is very very good. Um, what do you think, chat? Thundering Spark Mage is a two for one in the waiting. You know, you get a little party going and uh, Spark Mage does some work. We can always just default to the flip land knowing that that's a pretty solid place to be. It's both blue. Um, <clears throat> I'm tempted by the Skydiver because of the possible two for one there and the possible two for one here. But I think the wizard is probably the sensible pick here. Now, I don't know if Craig of Canada was here. I noticed, I watched part of the uh, coverage of the LR, LOL tournament last night, and I noticed that in uh, Craig of Canada's comments, he was saying that there's data that suggests that these are underperforming, that the decks packed with splans, as people are calling them, are actually not doing that well. Uh, I haven't heard that information, and I was going to ask Craig where the where that came from. Not a lot of players with equipment, says D. I think that's not true. D. D equipment is pretty prevalent in this set. It's not every game, not every play, every opponent, but I'd say like a third to a half have it. Uh, Valakut exploration is. Okay, but as we learned playing it, one big problem with triggering this with landfall, it means that you can't play lands that you find on it, which is a big knock on it for me. Bubble Snare is just super solid and matches our first color, which is very nice. What else is even competing with that? Uh, the Florahedron. You know, we could legit take the Florahedron, but <clears throat> this is, I'd rather take on color removal and rather than the uh, decent but not outstanding flip uh, flip card. So I'm going to take the snare. Yeah, it's definitely good. Uh, I, that was what the choice was for me, the snare or the land mana ramp dude. But you know what's also good for kicker decks, Herschel? Cards that are good and say kicker on them. Uh, how is it one of the weaker ones? I think it's <clears throat> on the scale of these types of cards, medium low. I get that it kind of does the same thing. It's like whatever, land or uh, two drop ramp dude. But I think that makes a difference on the turns where it can actually ramp you. It's, it's very nice to have. I think I like the Wind Rider Wizard over the Plunder up in the Uncommon section. Uh, Felidar down here is appealing to me. I'm coming up and up on the Hellion. Squid has been good as a uh, aggro tempo play, but not necessarily a reason to take it here. Expedition Healer is a nice two. 
but I don't see why I should take anything but a blue card when there, there's nothing here that is screaming that it's way better than this wizard. So what, let's take it, let's take an on color card. I do want to draft the hard way and not just lock into my first color, but also you do need to value cards that match colors of cards you already have a little bit more. One of the fundamental tough parts of draft is to figure out how much more. Obviously, Wind Rider Wizard is more valuable out of that pack because we have a Umara Wizard and a Bubble Snare. That's not complicated, but what's complicated is, is exactly how much. How good does a card be? How much better than Wind Rider does a card have to be before you take it over the Wind Rider there? And it's a tough question to answer, but uh, better than anything we saw in that pack is the is the is the easy answer. Is a less helpful answer. Another bubble snare though is good. When I first saw this card, I, I basically put it in that bucket of okay, it's a new blue enchantment that doesn't allow the creature to untap. Great, we've seen this a million times. We've seen this at four mana a million times, so it's like that. But it's better than that because of the one mana mode. If you're in a race and you can put this on and you don't care about triggering kicker matters stuff and you can throw this on a creature that has already attacked, if their three drop has attacked you and you throw a bubble snare on it on your turn four and then drop a three drop of your own, that is such a powerful two spell turn. You've gotten such a mana advantage and such a board advantage. So it's the one mana mode of the bubble snare that I wasn't really respecting when I first read it. Roiling Vortex sounds like it should be awesome, but it's really not. That's why it's still here. Nothing here is particularly awesome, but we can take some guesses. I, you know, I'm just willing to take a chilling trap here. I think Corn Beetle is maybe defensible. So is the Bayloth, but we're we're back into color preferences again. Uh, not preferences, sorry. You know, but color influences. We have two wizards. We're all blue. We could take a Seagate Colossus, but I think we need, like, in the decks where this is good, in a deck where Seagate Colossus is good, I still usually only want one because they still tend to be four or five mana and they still die to cheaper removal spells and are, are very blockable often when they show up. So I'd rather make a color stand here with Chilling Trap. It's a little worse than Bayloth and... Horn Beetle, but Horn Beetle doesn't really match what we're doing, and I don't want to go to Sky Dancer. Sky Dancer would be another thing to uh, pair with Blue, but we're on the Wizard Path, so let's take the trap and cut Blue. I like the cutting of Blue as well. That allows us to even take this Geyser Mage here and just take pure Blue picks. I'm f None of these are amazing. Like this, I look at this and it's not some bonkers start, but it's all super solid, so I'm pretty happy with how we're starting here, and I'm pretty happy to take a Geyser Mage and continue to put off our decision about what we're doing here. But the more kicker we pick up, the more I expect us to end up in green. But I'm not going to presume that. This is a fine place to be, though. I think you're underrating it, Chicken, if you have the wizard count. Uh, this is legit excellent in a heavy wizard deck. It is not impactful enough to play without the almost assuredness of a card draw. But once you're replacing it, uh, it actually becomes quite good. Whether you're racing, whether you're trying to win a combat. But of course, wizard is the key. If you're running this without, I, I want six wizards at least before I'm happy to have a chilling trap. And ideally, we have even more than that. So here's a squid we could take to keep on the blue. Uh, Bayine, Ve Bayine Vale is one of my least favorite splans, but it is a splan. We could still do it. Uh, if we thought we were going to be green, we could just take a Dauntless Survivor to help fill out our twos, fill out our twos, which we have none of. Cascade Seer is definitely a wizard, Craig, but it's not one that I uh, am prioritizing. I really think it's just about whether or not you want to hedge, to take the kind of 
easy pick, the simple pick of the spland or one of the two drops. And if we did take a two drop, I would take a, a squid. I think the squid is fine. And it's just doing a very similar job to what the Dauntless Survivor would be doing anyway. And these aren't generally very impressive looking creatures to people. Yeah, Krauser is saying they take the squid and I get it. But I think Vale is still good enough to take here. So we're gonna take it and maybe get some squids later. But it's, I'm liking that we, you know, we've been, we're nothing but blue so far. So we get a lot of, a uh, lot of choices. Glacial Grasp would keep us going on that path. I, I mean, this is just okay, but so is everything here. I don't see anything. None of these convinced me I should take it over the grasp. We could take, yeah, Fireblade is the one. We could take Fireblade and see if we end up red, green, red, blue, because grasp is pretty not signally. Nobody's going to see the grasp and think blue is open, right? Yeah, so we can hedge on Charger here. I'm in for that. It's it's the definitely the standout card in this pack. Everything else is well. Hellion is also fine, and and we've seen several of those going around. So you want the Cinderclasm? I find it just ends up hurting me. I find it hard to use, and we're best of one. I'm just gonna take the Charger. And here maybe this Wizard. Late Visionary, in my opinion, I like it better than Seer, Gloom Hunter, or Ascetic here. Gloom Hunter is a is a possibility as well, but the the green blue wizard thing is possible. So let's grab that and see. Kind of hedging towards finding our second color now. And let's see who yeah, Zori's passing to us. We could take a Hellion or Broken Wings. I'm gonna say Hellion, first Hellion over first Broken Wings here. Yeah, you're right, Herschel, it's always okay, but Hellion is actively good, uh, especially with, if we pick up some, you know, like a, you know, we can, it means we can do things like play the wizard land early, knowing that we can yank it back and turn it into a 4-3 later. I think this is a solid start. Clearly blue, clearly wizards heading into red question mark, green question mark. I'm not interested in the kite sail given that we're in blue and looking to make our own flyers. Living Tempest could be an example of that. Zendikon is a card that we could play same thing, play it on the wizard land to have it die and come back. But I'm going to take the Tempest on color match, on, on knowing that we're blue. Yeah, Zendikon may be a little better, but blue is the color we absolutely know we are. And it's not embarrassing to play a Tempest. It's just not ideal. Like, it just doesn't check any of the boxes the set really has. In this case, uh, we're talking about what to cut from somebody else. I'm going to cut the Dreadworm. Another Dreadworm, which I'll cut over the Vortex. Vortex, maybe we're, we take because there's some world in which we play red and want it, but we're not sideboarding, so we're just literally never playing it. I don't think I'm ever playing a Hellhound outside of like a red, green, dedicated landfall deck. Uh, ambush is nice, but look what we opened, gang. Into the Royal, nice, but I'm going to pick Roost of Drakes before something happens with technical difficulties and I somehow miss that pick. <laughs> Chicken. 
D is questioning Roost over the squad commander. I don't think it's particularly close, D. We already have uh, two bubble snares. So we have some, and a geyser mage. So we have some kicker already starting off. And Ch uh, Roost of Drakes is the consensus best uncommon in the set. Some more blue here. Got a crab if we wanted to be crabby, but falconer are gonna be better for us with the wizard type. What's this though? Maddening cacophony. One in a blue, four kicker, three in a blue. Each opponent, oh, this is the, the kicker mill card. We're not gonna do that. Although ruin crab plus cacophony is interesting being here. Someone takes the crab and wheels the cacophony. That could be interesting, but I'm gonna be a grown up and take the falconer. Would, would like to uh, reclaim the wastes, but Falconer, fine. I don't think Crab is correct, though. I think we have a nice thing going with the kicker payoffs. Let's just win with kicker. Royal, royal, royal. White, red, land. Into the royal easy pick here. All right, Krauser. Believe me, uh, there are people who consider uh, the crab the mythic uncommon that should be windmill slammed whenever it shows up. I think a squid jumps out at me. We're trying to, I'd like to be, uh, we're looking at, maybe we're just mono blue. I, I, so I just keep taking blue cards, I guess, since there's no kicker rewards here. And squid seems fine. It's not, it's a little early to be taking this. But we don't have our twos filled out and it does the thing. So let's take the squid. The thing being a attack reasonably and then trade up later. Yeah, I should be a little bit more specific as a streamer and commentator. Does a thing, not exactly a helpful phrase <laughs> for what's going on. Glacial Grasp is somewhat of a nice tempo play for the for where we're headed, but we really want our tempo plays to have kicker if possible. You know, Cunning Geyser Mage and Into the Royal are what we want to do that with over a, a Grasp, but Grasp is playable. Is there something else in another color? There's a Predation. We could take the Predation in case, because basically we're so heavy blue that we can make any other color a light player and the tap lands the the spell lands actually help with that so i'm leaning predation i'm nervous about that axe you like spare supplies here do we have time for that again it's like uh i really want my non creatures to say kicker on them i think predation is just fine and glacial grasp is an alternative wind robber not good enough for what we're doing mind drain if we would end up staying in the uh, black camp but i like night runner here if we end up in a little bit of red bouncing things out of the way of the night runner is legit and then uh, i'm a little more interested in those Glacial grasps or whatever that will clear the path for a night runner. Right now, it feels like we're we have more of a reason to be red, but also probably not a reason to ever run a fireblade charger. I'm looking at 
heavy blue light something else here. We saw the black flying 2-1 rogue. Cascade Seer, late prowling Felidar, good card there. Maybe I need to suck it up and try getting people with a duelist. There is a Seer. I keep passing these Seers. I'm not super impressed. Uh, Vanguard is very much heavy warriors, which we are not. Could take an ambusher, but again, all right. Yeah, we could take the Vanguard from somebody, but uh, I'm going to just play my game. I think the Duelist is playable, and I need to learn how to play it better and play around it better. I think I'm going to take the Duelist. Archon of Emeria is not astounding, but it's certainly playable in any white deck, so I'm a little surprised it's still here. I mean, it is a 2-3 flyer for 3 that has a quote, drawback that affects both players. So white is looking, this means to me that white is pretty open. But I'm going to take a Glacial Grasp here. I don't think this is worth hedging towards over a Grasp that kind of does what we're trying to do. Although look at all these, what do we, what do we, you take a Cleric to just keep keep on the blue plan. Really, like, yes, I'm taking blue cards, but they're no longer good ones. Felt like in pack one, the, the blue cards were good ones. And we could take a Gloom Hunter because it has Kicker. Yeah, I'll take Gloom Hunter over a Cleric that's very replaceable. Uh, we do have one, you know, we have this Predation. We even have a couple of dread worms if we, you know, desperately needed some fives. Looks like black is around. I can deliberate for less, but I'm going to stick with the glacial grasp. It does do the tempo thing. I mean, I, I I want stuff that says kicker, but we're with a, with kicker decks. You're trying to make it to your six mana point so that your falconer is scrying two while you bounce something with your geyser mage and make a roost drake and being able to cast glacial grasp on three and prevent two attacks from your opponent's current biggest threat can help you get there and it draw and it replaces itself so i'll take it and here's another gloom hunter to consider Gloom Hunter kicked needs a second black, so it's not like you can really go light black and play a Gloom Hunter. A third Glacial Grasp. Are we just going on in on them? I deliberate is just not what I want to do on two. Uh just feels like two wheel spinny without protecting you at all. Like the benefit of deliberate is that it replaces itself, and of course you scry two, but this does a similar thing while preventing damage to you. So I'm going to continue to take Glacial Grasp. So I don't know if we can run all of them. <laughs> Let's do it. Grasping at straws. A grasp on the format. Some Get your grasp puns ready for the deck name. Relic Robber is very strong. Stronger than even this... You need to you you want this on three, of course. <laughs> Another glacial grasp for us to get on the way back. How crappy is this a pack for us though that we're we're almost mono blue and pack three pick one, the only blue card is a fifth glacial grasp. However, relic robber is somewhat is like, yay, we actually kind of know what second color we want to include now. I'm gonna take it. Medio would like the warrior over the robber. I hear you. That this is a, a very powerful effect. Of course, this is this is the type of thing you want on your land spells. 
your expensive creature that you can have for free later. But yeah, uh, it's the quad grasps that make me want to take the relic robber. We're going to be able to get it through, I think. What? Wow. But I'm gonna take I'm taking into the royal. I'm gonna be a grown up. Falconer is good too. Geyser Mage, Chilling Trap. I'd like to wheel all a lot of that stuff. I mean, actually, you know, you we could. We could take this and just say, look. Uh, I can't do it from this scene, but I mean, you could argue that the uh, the mall is better than robber, hellion, and night runner, and we should just take it and run it. We don't have to spite draft it. I'm not trying to win every game. I'm just trying to, yeah. I'm going to take the royal. I'm going to be grown up in here. I'll I'll find. Uh, yeah, here we can go. Grown-ups. Shambler is solid, too. Some good cards going around here. I guess we're fighting for our color, but we can take Rock Slide Sorcerer. That's nice for this deck. We cut the black and expect that we are blue-red here. Sorcerer is looking for wizards along with instants of sorceries, and we got a lot of all those. Throne. Well, this is a kicker spell card. But I don't know if we actually want it over just a baseline wizard here. Oh uh, yeah, this this would be I would I think I would maybe play this in our deck, although frankly our uh our kicker cards have dwindled a bit. Yeah, I, I think I would play this in a kicker deck, unlike a lot of lands that seem like they're synergistic, but in this case I do think the diviner is just better. For us, Relic Amulet is on plan. Would love to try and cast this Spoils of Adventure, but Relic Amulet's great. This is kind of your wizard build around, and we're doing all three of these things, instant sorceries and wizards. And it gives us more to do on two, which I also like. Hoping we wheel that other chilling trap, if not something better. Although maybe uh, need to... I got so many glacial grasps, I should be rooting for, you know, the uh, royal mage and, and wizard creatures here would be nice. Royal mage, about one of the better things we could find here in a pack. Uh, Bubble snare, not far behind, though. Florahedron, going to help somebody do some serious ramping, but we're taking the snare. I don't know how we win. Let's see. We have uh, how many creatures? <laughs> one bad one, or one... Uh, the, the effect isn't bad, but the creature that's left behind is. So, like, bad creature, medium creature, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten if we have to, eleven, twelve, three. Yeah, we're actually doing okay on creatures. That makes me feel better. I thought we were a lot lower than we when we actually are. Uh, Fissure Wizard gives us a two-drop wizard. That seems excellent. It's red, but we can be red enough for that. Yeah, Krauser, we got a roost reasonably early, but then kind of dwindled on the kicker. But we do have uh, three snares and two royals for th and a geyser mage. That's six. But then uh, the seventh is the roost, which you can't count for roost purposes. 
And we're kind of running out of time to, to get there. But I think we want to plunder here. Not doing too much at five. We'll probably run it. Or at least we're not doing much past five. And what else are we taking? Cleansing wildfire. That doesn't seem right. Sure, we're taking a fifth glacial grasp. Is there a world I don't play the roost? Nah, I think I, uh, I think I would play roost with two other kicker spells that I really liked, because the the floor of roost is four mana two two flyer that's vulnerable as a token. And while that's not great, that's a, quite the floor. There's that trap, but we got we got so many non-creature spells. We got to figure out exactly what we're doing here. This is going to be a very creature light deck, but we're going to be drawing a lot, grasping a lot. Tormenting voice. I think I like, even though I was saying we're creature light. I don't want another Tempest. I would rather have a Tormenting Voice for all of our spell Spells Matter stuff. Yeah, and we do have a lot of card draw, so maybe we play Tormenting Voice even over something expensive like the Plunder. Uh, we do have some combos with small unblockability with like Relic Robber, but I doubt we're running that. Negate, not going to make a main deck here, and I'm already cutting this one, but we'll take a negate and move it to the unused board. And we have a reasonable deck. I'm a little worried about the the... Creature depth early, but these grasps should keep us alive. As will the bubble snares, etc. So, 30 cards, including. How do I. There we go. Two splans. I'm going to cut, treat this as a land and this as a spell. So 29, six cuts. We can cut at least one of the grasps for, for a starting point. Uh, but I want to look and see if there's stuff we really don't like in the deck. Like, I, I really think we can get by without the Tempest, maybe. Medea just wants to cut red entirely. You think that's worth it? Here, I'll do, I'll export a mono red, or mono blue, and then I'll export one with red, and then we can have both available. Uh, I'm going to put back the grasp. The veil is in the deck, I'm just not counting it for, and that's 23 exactly. So we put that in, and have the 16 lands, and this would be a deck. Almost took the mall. We were so blue that we felt like we could take it, but we also felt like we couldn't really re-equip. True says we don't have enough creatures, but we don't need that many when we are have these have the four the three snares and endless grasps. Anyway, I'm gonna export this and make this one of the options in our decks
The grasps make it easier to punch through damage, and Wizard, Falconer, and Tempest provide, and Roost Drakes provide, you know, th this side of town provides our wind condition, bunch of air support. Yeah, grasping for air is uh, is good for uh, for the mono blue especially. Now, if we were to add Relic Robber, Night Runner, Sorcerer, and Hellion, I think we could leave out the Fissure Wizard and the Tormenting Voice as early plays and just introduce a little bit of red for quality late plays. And if we were to do this, we would cut Tempest, a Grasp, um, I'd want two more cuts from this. Could just do another grasp, you know, cut two grasps. Thanks, Lizard. Chilling trap, let's do a chilling trap count. I haven't really been honest with myself about our wizard count or just even looked at it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six wizards. Yeah, we could cut a chilling trap, I think. That makes some sense. So this would be my red version, and I would go five, I think. Eleven, like thirteen, five would be our mana base. Maybe it needs to be six if we want to get these reliably on three. Twelve, six. I think this is what we do if we introduce red. And I'm going to do an export on this. I'll ask chat. Let's see what you think. Which one? Mononucleosis or Russia? Your choice. Let's call it, I like, what was it? Uh, Grasping for error is good. I'm going to call it and David wants to chill. Sure. Gotta go digging for it though, because there's so many memes now. Here it is. All right, everyone, chill. Oh, and Dionysus, I have not properly listened to your song yet, so I have to save the review for till Monday. Looks like people want to try the red. That's kind of where I was leaning. I think the power level of the red cards is high enough to be worth it. And I really like the Hellion getting back a wizard land as well.
Fuller Almond Ket. You got it. I'm sure D will appreciate that. That you're thinking about him like that. Sunset Almond Ket or Sun you know, let's go Sunset Almond Ket. Kind of both sunsetty here. We'll go with this one. Twelve six, right? All right. And we've got to put Glacial Grasp as our card here. I am Bat Meme. Some people say that sometimes, but I never get tired of hearing it. I'm glad you find our community and this content great. And you're part of it, though. Thank you for being here, Bat Meme. All right. I got a whisper to check. I think we might be good. Let's see. Already friends. Good. Yeah, there was no black to speak of. So somebody's somebody's got some serious black deck action going on. Um. Thank you so much for that sub. Who was that? Queen Dragon gifting subs to Bat Meme. Speaking of our community being awesome. Zori, sounds like you had the black experience that I was having in blue. I was kind of mono blue after one. Uh, let me know when Dr. Schnuffy is ready, a.k.a. King Coffee. I can do a challenge, though. I think that should work, right? Unless they're not even close. Okay, standing by. Great. And let's, uh, oh. I will hold, let's see. Yeah, we'll just do a 40 card challenge match. Best of one. That's fine. Yeah, you saw your colors, but not card quality. I know how that feels, Queen. Although you still feel like, okay, I'm, I'm doing something right because my color is here, but I wish these cards were better. All right, here we go. Nice, we got our splash. I got a squid. We got grasp to clear the way and draw cards, find our hellion. Maybe we'll draw a splan we can play and get it back with a hellion. I don't know. Easy keep in any case. No, I turned off the rope. I almost did Razor. Then I said, well, let's let's just be greedy. Let's not put myself under that pressure. So now we get Squid, and then next turn... Grasp down whatever blocker Schnuffy comes up with. And then turn four, we have Diviner, and presumably turn five, Hellion. So we got a nice two, three, four, five curve out, which is a great way to start a game of Magic. Bubble Snare, we'll make use of you later. Uh, we could just offer the squid for the uh, the priest. I'm fine if they want to take that trade. I don't think they will. And then we can grasp on Oppo's turn instead of now. Maybe they will. If they think this is a trade that needs to happen, I'm fine with that. We'll just grasp at the end of their turn anyway. Could also bubble snare here, but no need to. 
I can grasp pre-combat if we want to take down that Gloom Hunter, and maybe that's fine. But I bet that we save more damage if we grasp whatever is coming after this Gloom Hunter. Although if uh, Doctor goes for something like discard, then we'll just grasp a tapped creature for a card draw at any rate. go some of the black cards that we didn't see in the draft are in Schnuffy's camp and now we'll just throw a diviner next turn we have unkick snare and grasp find a land we can just go hellion Hoping to not do Hellion yet, though I'd rather curve out towards like kicking that Geyser Mage. Up against a lot of lifelink here. But that's nice that uh, that caused a, a stoppage. I'm gonna play the Veil tapped here and then we can get it back with Hellion later. And I like sending the Diviner. I'm tempted to save the Snares in case we find our Roost and want to kick stuff later. We could also do a Snare now, though, on the Celebrant and then grasp something else. Like grasp the uh, Lifelink Vigilant on their turn. We had you in mind, D. Someone thought of you. I'm gonna do it. Although, what is that doing to tap that? Doesn't really do much. It's not really the threat. Let's, uh, let's, let's just leave it. I'm gonna uh, grasp the healer and leave everything else. Gaze upon it, Dionysus. Mmm, Richard Wright. Look at that sun about to go into the Bolas's horns. What a tense moment in the story. Sorry. Uh, let's see. I will go grasping the healer here. Hey, that's not bad. Kind of becomes a must kill for Schnuffy, this sorcerer. Uh oh. Got a lot of like bounce and interaction, but not a lot of remove. You know, we can't really take this off the battlefield very easily for, for good. So, somewhat of a problem. Um, I am going to. Attack with the Diviner. Well, actually, uh, yeah, attack with the Diviner, then play Rock Slide Sorcerer with Chilling Trap up. Oh, is CBL being goofy? I have interacted with it. Usually that does it. <laughs> so now check. What I want to do, though, is activate the Chilling Trap on their turn, shrink something, uh, and then um, ping the Gloom Hunter. But we're gonna get some white cat creature tokens along the ground. Our 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 wind plan is in the air. That's why we call this grasping for air. So hopefully a bunch of kitties doesn't stop us from getting there. Uh, 
Uh, I am going to Chilling Trap the Gloom Hunter itself. If for some reason um, this gets countered or something, and, and I, I don't know, I'm just like, if this doesn't work, but somehow the minus does, I would like the Gloom Hunter to not deal lifelink to us. So I'm going to target it, but then also try and kill it. Oh, that's true. Oh, uh, yeah, it's too late, though. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've drunk, I've denied myself a card with this play though, which is worse. So I shouldn't have done it, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I, I need to kill the thing. So I'm going to do it, but I'm, instead of drawing a card, I'm just take, treating this as a one for one instead. All right, D. I suppose we asked for this, but I don't know why you, uh, I don't know what your, what happens to your brain when you see this that makes it so tough for you to handle, but I don't know, it's like whatever to me. I think they look cool. Uh, Captain, Flying Vigilance. We can snare that. Might want to just snare, like, let's see, we've got Double Sorcerer, can we... Grasp. We could grasp and mage and kill a 2-2. Two -two. But I kind of just like kicking the geyser mage and killing the 1-1. One -one and sending something back, you know. Let's go. Let's send this back and kill the 1-1. One -one and then get in with our... Diviner. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. Well, I'm going. Oh. Yeah, just got to keep killing them, though, right? I mean, better than going to the face or whatever. I guess we could go to the face with the pings, but killing the kitties still seems correct. Even though they're going to return. Maybe especially because they're going to return. Oh yeah, good point. Next, if we hold up Glacial Grasp and they go for the Emeria Captain, we can... Um, get it. And actually, so I could kick the Roost of Drakes, obviously, here. That would leave us with two mana, which would not be enough for that particular trick. I think that particular trick is valuable enough that I'm actually going to hold here. We're going to hold Roost, attack with our Diviner, and see about killing that captain before it can be big against us. Snuffy no dummy, they may not play into that, but if that keeps the captain off the table, there are worse things too. And we can consider grasping at the end of turn so they don't end this turn with no value. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff affecting us as static abilities. Uh, the Blight Priest pinging us with life gain, obviously the healer making tokens. So we're up against a lot of life gain that we need to overcome here, and we don't have a lot of tools to get these off the board. But Schnuffy's going for it, so we're going to go for it. I don't know if I need to put on full control, but just to, uh, I, I don't think so. This goes on the stack, and then we'd have a chance to respond. But I get nervous at these moments and just want to absolutely make sure I'm doing it right. Yeah, we don't want to bubble snare the captain if we can just kill it outright, though, right? So here we want to go... Um, Attack, tap down the priest since it can actually attack and force a trade, whereas nothing else can. But yeah, we're still getting clocked, right? We gotta, like, this falconer is good. I think I'm gonna go with this next, and then we'll get into our kicking and try to get seven flying 
to get them dead before they can drain us to zero from 12. They have a lot of tools here for it. Into the Royal, very nice to see, but I am gonna start with this Falconer and then go into all of this uh, kicking stuff. With Into the Royal and Bubble Snare, you could even make an argument for um, playing the Roost unkicked here, but I think we should be greedy. Let's see. Eh, there's an argument for it. Let me know if, what you think, chat. But I'm going to uh, just keep taking out kitties so they can't get too wide on us. I think we wait. I think we can be... Kill Priest, but with what? With how? <laughs> I, I couldn't there, right? Lizard, did I miss a line? Two pings how? Uh, you want to just go... I, mean, I don't even see how. Seven land gives us Yeah, this is tough. Uh, we may just be dead to what's going on here. That's why I'm trying to get him dead in the air quick. Um, well, I'm going to play this. I'm going to attack with my flyers. Yeah, good point. I can do some stuff there. Ha, huh. let's see. If I draw a basic land next turn, we can kick and then kick. If I Play the roost. If I kick the roost now, it's all we've got. But what I can do is that, you know, it was suggested, like, if I play the Hellion and bring the coast back, we can actually cast the Veil to prevent a bunch of damage, uh, if needed. And then... Um, <clears throat> and then have uh, next turn, at the worst, into the Royal Kicked plus the spell we're bringing back to kill this thing if we think we need to do that. So I'm gonna play this and then play this to bounce it. You don't think they're attacking? Hmm. I guess now, next turn, I can't have the eight to do both of these things, but I still like this. Yeah, because we can do Veil Royal next turn and kill the priest. Media doesn't like this line. Well, the the point of this line is to kill this priest, Media, because we, we're going to lose to the priest, right? So I'm trying to at least come up with a line that kills that kills the priest outright next turn. Oh, do I need to bounce here? Let's see. Um, whenever you gain life, each opponent loses. So one, two, three, four. Really, we're, we're dead if we don't? Is it on the, on the crack? But then we have the veil. How are we dead? We have Veil. It means that we don't have Veil to set up uh, killing the priest next turn. Hmm. Yeah, I think we just got to let this happen. Because I would rather use the Veil than the Royal here.
I never seem to get a good black white clerics deck. I've I've tried to get into it, but the one time we had the sign the, the signal that it was open, we it was too late to get in. Okay, well, by not attacking, we do get our plan here, at least, which is nice. Um, it is too bad we do not get to create a roost token off of the kicked into the royal, but we have to two spell here and kill this priest or we're just straight dead. So that's the plan. Uh, what are we going to bounce? I guess we can just kill a token on the bounce. Mm, do we do it on their turn? I suppose we have. Yeah, maybe we do do it on their turn. Let's put do upkeep. Good call. Uh, they're only they're only playing black white, so they could have they could have um, protection. That but we should risk that. And yeah, we could play roost for one and still do it all. Oh, but we don't get it all. We don't get it all in that case, right? Because we need unless. Because if we're going to kick this and play this, then we we only have six, and that's what we got mana-wise. So shelter is what they might have if we let them do this, but I still think we should risk that. Uh, so yeah. And I think we can attack with the falconer here because we're going to shrink everything on their turn anyway. Right, but I'm waiting to do this on their upkeep, on their untap. So they will have two, but I'm going to risk it. I think it's absolutely correct to risk it. Thank you. All right, we're going to try to get the doctor. With this plan, we're going to royal a token. Kicked. We're going to aim the rock slide at the Blight Priest. And then... Actually, I should let this all resolve. Hmm. Land isn't the worst, but not what we need. We're going to bin that and try to find more action if we can survive this. That's a nice play here. He's got a nice life cushion, so two damage to pick two of the best top four seems great. Relic Robber, not at its best here, but we can go kick Roost and play it anyway. Um... I like attack with Falconer, then kick the Roost, and then hold up Duelist. I think we're roosting for one. So you want Roost on uh, one, kick Bubble Snare. That uses up and then we have a couple of mana left. What? Huh. Surprised you don't like uh, roosting here. I'm going to go... Uh, this is where I was headed, and I'm going to do it. That's good, too. Uh, 
Um, I'm going to keep this snare, even though it means we can't do both next turn. I like picking up the snares. And then, yeah, holding Duelist is fine. One, two, three, four. Because <laughs> cause the deck wasn't good enough already. Now we... <laughs> Great deck, Doctor. We're hanging in, though. We might just be dead now, but we're hanging in. Incredible deck here. And I think that does it. We still have Duelist to not die, but, you know, taking out... Um, okay, you're going to do that. All right, all right, that's fine. We might just be dead for lack of defenders, but we have a duelist and a minus two, so I think we can survive. This is my guess. But your friend here is only mostly dead. Well, we can stop three, four, five. Well, make him attack. We have open mana and mysterious cards. It's still not an easy thing for the doctor to commit to this attack, per se. So, in this case, we need to just shrink something so that it doesn't do any damage to us. So we do that. And then I throw some blocks around. We're going to jump up here. And try and win down here. Might not be enough, but I'm going to throw stuff on the biggest stuff and see what ends up. Yep, looks like it was not enough. Oh, it still wasn't enough. I, mi I messed up my blocks, but I think it still wasn't enough. Bring out He's dead, sir. That man's dead back then. Must be dead. He was worse than dead. Too much cleric. Uh, that was a bad matchup for us. All of our interaction is only temporary or leaves the thing on the battlefield. So it was pretty impossible to do much there. We came, We I like how we played. Hodge had a line to survive another turn, I guess, but we were doomed. Become friends with the queen. It's good to be friends with the queen. Yeah, turn two amulet would have uh, gone a long way, wouldn't it have? Yeah, it was a absurd deck. No shame losing to that. Uh, queen, where you at? We get you. Well, I'll try it this way then. Oops. Oh, that's not it? Oh, I just took... I got a whisper. Let's see. I thought that... I thought that was... Oh, sorry. My bad. My bad, my bad. Uh, but here. 
all fixable. I'm gonna do it this way since I'm in this window queen, but I'll also add you as a buddy. Challenge match, best of one, here we go. You know how like proverbs have weird origins and you hear proverbs and you like you don't even understand like exactly what it means or where it comes from. I think I need to make a, the going optimal proverb. One must go to the store before they worry about hair. Well, all right, we'll cancel that and accept queens. We will figure it out here. Queen and I trying to connect. There we go. I'm just happy. Well, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm, as a uh, as a well decided state, my vote means very little in terms of influencing the outcome of the election, and because of that, I actually do not get inundated with political ads. Those of you in swing states must be going insane. So, do we keep this? Boy, this is a, a mountain. I would love this. We got the grasp ahead of the robber, or after the robber. Uh, and the royal. Hmm. Yeah. Suffice it to say, neither candidate seems interested in running ads in Washington State. I don't know. Uh, do they think? Apparently not a battleground over here. <laughs> over here. Um, yeah, Utah. Nobody is advertising in Utah, I bet. I think we know what's going to happen in Utah. Anyway, back to actual magic. Are we keeping this? Gah! I kind of want to keep it, but it, it's it's all about yeah. You know, I'm gonna keep because we have wind. We have wizard on three, and that's fine. If we don't uh, like, if we get a mountain and can robber, wonderful. If we don't, we still have plays. Hey, there's our red. Very nice. We'll play that now and have Into the Royal ready. Uh, robber has haste such that if Queen plays anything that can block and kill the robber, I'm going to royal it for, quote, no value. As it is, we're going to put Queen to the test. She's got open mana, so uh, no guarantee that this works. If she's got some instant speed red removal, I expect it to be used on El Robberino here, but we're going to send him into the red zone and see what happens. That could be bad news for Queen because we are well prepared to get this in multiple times if she only produces creatures as a means to stop it. If she can kill it, there you go. Good job, Queen. Got to kill that thing. It was going to get out of hand if she let us go any farther with that. Speaking of getting out of hand, how about kicked Roost Drake ahead of Bubble Snare and into the Royal? Sorry, Queen. This isn't your fault. Yeah, Queen needs a bomb now to counteract my bomb. And this is the problem with the Drake, right? She's using basically premium removal, understandably, to uh, get our flyer dead, but we're just going to make more of them. And here I like... 
we can um wizard i just like into the royal on queen's turn though bounce hellhound yes but on queen's turn Yeah, Hellhound has not been great, but I do believe it could, like, it's better in multiples if you can have three of them and make it truly a reliable part of your turn one game. And you have dedicated ways to re-trigger landfall, then I am uh, liking it more. I am going to go ahead and uh, kick this and actually bounce the Bayloth back and just set her back a Bayloth turn. And I'm not, I could wait, but I'm not blocking either of these anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me that we're telegraphing that we have a 2-2. Two -two. Heck, maybe it'll cause Queen to not attack somehow, but she would have attacked with both, with or without the Drake, so I didn't really care about the timing there. Night Runner is another Saboteur. Saboteur is magic slang for cards that trigger on combat combat damage to an opponent for a benefit for you. And with uh, six mana, we can actually go wizard night runner here and then have snares and graphs ready next turn. So I'm going to do that. A turn off from kicking stuff for drakes, but we will get back on it shortly. And with queen out of cards, this is a safe block. Veil is actually going to be fine here we get to bubble snare and have veil up for next for the follow uh, for their turn for queen's turn and can't get them both but we'll do this like we're not going to get the night runner through here but we can get our flyers through Did I leak or did Queen leak? I'm not sure which one. Both are in range. And sure, I don't think this is a... I mean, we can actually... Yeah, might as well do this. I think we can do this. Queen might have pump... Maybe I don't need to do this at 13. And I'm just almost being fancy play, but the veil makes me want to be safe about it and just go ahead and try to trade here. We have so much coming up that this is fine, I think. And we'll ditch a grasp here and keep these two sweeties. So we snare down the wizard, make a drake, and get in for a ton, and should be nearly lethal. With this, actually with the uh, with this thing, it becomes lethal next turn. <clears throat> All right.
Good queen, good game queen, no shame. Stop it with that shame. I want you to feel good about participating today and and taking your stab at it and playing in this event and getting some feedback here and stuff. No shame, okay? Deck looked fine. Didn't love the Hellhound, but it's not unplayable in the right spots. And I, I didn't like hate any of your cards. Yeah, and we had the exact kind of hand that my deck wants to have. Good game, Queen. Stand proud. Haj, uh, thinking the president should take his own advice. Uh, one of my favorite comments was uh, from actually our buddy. I think it was, no, I, I don't think he, it was from um, Card Kingdom's, uh, a Card Kingdom employee I know, Justin Treadway, who said, uh, 50 cc's of bleach stack. <laughs> Time for the jinx. That's the other comment I liked. Why did he get tested? If he didn't get tested, he could he didn't have it. This is the awkward type of hand you can end up with in a low creature count deck like ours. The trap is not great because we don't have the wizard to activate it, but a Glacial Grasp does give us some action on three. I am wondering if we can survive, though. I don't know what Jinx is playing, but if he's on aggro, this is not, I don't think, going to be good enough. Uh, it is asking too much of the top of the deck. I'm going to mulligan this. This looks a little better. We're gonna keep this and I'm actually gonna ditch, I'm gonna be greedy and ditch an island because we have uh, three, four spells we can cast on our two mana. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, be land greedy here. Yeah, there's some people out there who suspect maybe he's not even being truthful about this. I expect, he is in this case, but it's certainly understandable to n not believe the word there. I'm going to offer the squid here. I'm going to play squid and be willing to trade for the bug catcher. This is uh, Boros, so we are up against aggro, and I'm glad I mulliganed. And amulet can be a little slow here, uh, but we can go squid. And then what I like here is we play squid. The next turn we can go, it, let's, say they, let's say Jinx answers the squid. We have three mana next turn. We can go Amulet, Bubble Snare, the Bug Catcher, and keep it tapped, and then set up, hopefully with any land, to kick into the Royals, add counters to the Amulet, and stay alive. So that's the plan here. Yeah, it's understandable that people would go there, but he would not see that as a as a power move. There's no way he would see faking COVID as some sort of power move, and he's not incapable of doing a move he doesn't think is a power move. Archon of Amiria. This is the one we passed where it's like, this isn't amazing, but this is a fine creature, you know? And there it is, being fine. But this trades with both. Uh... I want to continue to threaten to trade, though. So even though we could activate squid and attack, I'm just going to play an island, play the amulet, and pass. Hey, you can redeem no blah 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 anytime. But 
whether you get me to change topics is remains to be seen. I don't think we're really overdoing it. It's, it's also super big news. I mean, All right, we get to bounce the Archon and put a counter on the amulet and unequip the knife. And now I'll actually start swinging as well. Would love just a basic land off the top and drop a falconer, put another counter on the amulet, and get a nice big flyer. No luck. However, we can go Night Runner and snare the catcher. Don't know if we want to do that though. Uh, we could Royal looking for uh, more land, and then we get another counter on the amulet that takes out the bug catcher which doesn't stink, although this does add power toughness, so they could equip to try and prevent that. He could equip to try and prevent that. Um, yeah, I think I'm on... Am I on Royal? I don't know if Royal is right here. I really want to find a land to get Falconer going, though, and it does put a counter on the amulet, so I think I will do it. And I'll send back the bug catcher as the actual attacking threat here. And there's our land, so I'm kind of glad I did that. Hey, Doc, thank you so much. 13 months. No reason to attack here. If we find a land next turn, then what? We would get kicked bubble snare and amulet. That's not a bad turn. We can just get the Falconer going if we don't get land. I don't mind binding on the squid. All right, we do have a sixth land. I think I'm going to go with the Grotag Runner amulet plan here. Actually, what about snaring this now, setting up runner next turn? I guess we're not going to kill two things because they can. He can drop uh, archon and have a two three. So we're going to be facing a. Uh, if we tap this, we'll be facing a one four or two three. I'd rather just tap this. So rather than snare the one four on the ground, when it's not going to get our Grotag Knight Runner through. I'm going to save the snare for uh, the Emiria. Relic Robber adds to the possible threat suite. We could... Play Mountain, play Relic Robber, attack with Runner and Robber, and then uh, or then Bubble Snare. If we Bubble Snare the Emiria, then Runner and Robber have a good chance of getting through, but Robber is going to enter tapped thanks to the Archon anyway. And one spell per turn, good point. So maybe we just go uh, Falconer here. Falconer and get a counter. We have looting. We do have looting. Am I supposed to hold lands? Hmm. Oh, doesn't this... Oh, non-basic lands. I'm sorry. I thought this was a karma type ability where our creatures entered tap. Non-basic lands entering tap is no big deal. Um... That being said, do we want this out? I think we do because there are possible draws next turn where we want to cast a bunch of stuff.
Amulet on one with two mana says they can't play anything with one toughness, which in red especially is legit. There's a lot of one toughness red creatures in the set. Hmm. It's not working. I'll, I'll can restart uh, restart cardboard. See if that. Oh, it looks like it's even gone away. Hold on. Sometimes there's a update or something I need to do. I have restarted cardboard. Hopefully, maybe that'll do something. Yeah, just to restart. Okay, so 4-4 four, four on the ground. Do we take that? Yeah, we take that. We can just uh, pin it down with the bubble snare next turn. That's fine. Take take four here. All right, more lands, eight mana total. We can kick a snare, or we can just play it. Um, one, five, six, seven. We got nine total of spells in hand if we just play the snare unkicked, which we could do here given that uh, you know the the four power four four thread is already tapped down. I'm gonna go. Certainly, I'm gonna kick, or I'm gonna play the snare here and try to keep. Well, we're at night. Four four in the air is nice, but a two three cracking back is tough. We could also. Snare this, or uh, kick snare this and drop Hellion. But not all on this turn, right? Eight mana doesn't get it done this turn on that axis. Um, so I want to be aggressive up here. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting the one spell thing. Um, so given that, we just want Hellion, right? And here we go on Falconer attacking or not. I think I'm going to say yes. If they attack back, we put Bubble Snare on the flyer. And I got to put pressure on Jinx or we're just going to wait to lose. Well, Carboard Live is being weird again. Maybe it stopped. Yeah, hold on. It's now asking me for stuff. It's like there's two instances of it open. I don't know. Hold on. I'm going to... Sorry, Jinx. This is me doing tech support here, but I'm going to restart CBL. That's rough, and again, we're in a spot where our removal isn't good at taking off um, these onboard abilities. So, uh, but we can actually, this is fine. Let's see if uh, we don't have, well, watch this. Like, we have to give up our Hellion, but this is okay.
And then Wizard can even give us a loot. Uh, we can Bubble Snare. Oh, we can only do one, one spell or turn. I can't get over that. Apparently, I cannot get over that. Um, so now I think at seven, I actually hold the Falconer back. Thanks, Nan. Sometimes I can do some stuff okay. I think in this case, I go ahead and offer Wizard and Runner on the Adept. Jinx hasn't shown, didn't show combat tricks to stop the play last turn. So I assume that Wizard plus Runner on Farsight Adept would be a one for one. If it's not, it's because he sandbagged something last turn or drew something this turn, but also only has one spell per turn. So also that that's you know settles it that this is it. If if there is an attack here, we get the clean blocks we want. But there isn't, so that's fine. Grasp would be our only play for the turn if we did it, but we could actually lock down, you know, we don't need to do the bubble snare per se. Grasp gets a counter on the amulet and lets the falconer attack a couple times. So I'm going to do that. Although we can, yeah, let's attack with the falconer and then uh, grasp on Jinx's upkeep. And if we're doing it on Jinx's upkeep, we can actually two spell, right? I can go uh, uh, bubble snare on something else, even if we want. Uh, is this the biggest threat? Maybe we just want a relic robber out. Let's do that. Let's build the board here and then have gr glacial grasp into bubble snare next turn. Saving the island because we want to loot. Did not suck. I liked it. I guess, I mean, the thing is with one more counter on Amulet, we couldn't kill anything on his board anyway. Yeah, we can Sorcerer now and Amulet the Archon. Um, again, haven't seen tricks, so have to call this attack. Going to take the champ and double block the adept and see if we get this. You are. It's going to be a while. Kanata has to still be... I'm streaming into the afternoon because we're going to have Jay Schneider on G-Guards, but if uh, that streamer is still streaming, you got it. Cross fingers that we're not dead to double trick or whatever, but make, make him have it. I don't know how you'd have double trick, given that I'm thinking you would have to top deck the one. Okay, so we get uh, one spell here, and it could be uh, the Sorcerer, but I, I'm just going to Bubble Snare the Celebrant and, well, the Grotag Night Runner. then. I guess if it's a land, we could play it. Um, I'm going to go 
Well, maybe I'm just being greedy. Like we can, I guess we just play sorcerer and be able to amulet a three drop, amulet like a champ, right? And one power doesn't kill any of the stuff on the ground. I guess what I'm, th yeah. And if the runner could actually cast a spell after we snared, that would be interesting. But the archon means that we can't. Um, but yeah, we do get to loot and get future pings. So let's do this starting. Let's start with the sorcerer. And now we can actually just threaten to kill the celebrant if they block. I like that. Can't, I'm not going to play the island because we can't cast another spell anyway. Probably just use the amulet to take out the champ here. Yeah, attack first made some sense. I, but also looting and you know being able to see draw extra cards before we decide what to do with the rest of our turn made some sense to me. And. Yeah, I'm not going to mess around here. I'm going to take out the champ now. That's fair. Hodge pointing out that I couldn't play whatever I drew because I'd already uh, played the sorcerer. I'm going to block here. I don't know what Jinx is up to, but I don't want to be dead to, again, some uh, direct damage spell or something, some combat trick combination I'm not thinking about properly. Play conservative. <clears throat> There you go. How to come back. But we're not in a bad way here. Oh, really? We cast it once. You must have missed that day. Uh, if you're into collection building, first you actually complete 4X Mythics every set. If you don't cast 4X Mythics every set, or if you don't acquire 4X Mythics every set, you're not taking gems there, you're taking collection building. If you regularly 4X your Mythics, then it's a 40 gem bump, and that's pretty strong. That's, that's going to be more gem EV than the Scythe Cat, even. I'm going to do a... No value Glacial Grasp looking for a thing to win the game with. Did not find. Funny for a uh, Boros deck to cast onto Inversion, but there you go. That's why these cards are good. Allow you to play eight mana sweepers that save you games in a Boros aggro deck. Yeah. All right, that's nice.
Yikes. Keep thinking we have it, and then suddenly we don't. Eh, that's not bad for us. We're going to bubble snare uh, the squad commander and then try to chilling trap slash veil. Still got, still got this. Mm, which one do we want dead? Probably the war leader, right? This just has the equipment on it, that's all. Your friend here is only mostly dead. I am being aggro here because we gotta force, we gotta see if we can get him dead. So, so, I'm going to block. We draw a card, and I don't want to risk uh, losing on trick or something. <clears throat> nice. I could duelist to get a little extra X, but... I don't think I care. I'd rather save the duelist for possible game saving. But I want to cast this first <clears throat> in case there's something game winning here. Wizard grasp and mountain, sure. Now we get Wizard with uh, Duelist available and Grasp to try and win. Bug Catcher, not enough. Kicked, kicked Royal Eruption was the was going to be the uh, the real. Oh my God! <laughs> if that happened. Ostensibly, this is ours. Needs a lot to go right here. We're going to try and pin down the catcher and just swing for the win. All right. What a tough one. Great game, Jinx. Great game. Well played. Well played. Well played. Your comeback was awesome. That was a tight one, Jinx. Good game. I do my hair toss. Check my nails. Baby, how you feeling? Really good. Pac Man up next.
Yeah, it went back and forth a couple times there. I thought you had me on, uh... I thought I had... You You raft, then I thought I had the follow-up to get you, then you dumped hand, and I thought I was dead, and then I found perfect cards to undead myself. No two here, which I don't like, but with Night Runner and Grasp and Into the Royal, I'm going to keep on the strength of having a good chance of being able to get the Night Runner through. But would not mind picking up a two drop. Hmm, land spell, and it is blue. I'm going to just play it because I would like to have double blue on four for royal. I'm not going to mess around with that. I think I'd rather have a two. I really would love to get on board here, especially on the draw. If we were on the play, maybe it would be more tempting to ask for a three. But we're going to be trying to get our three drop through four drops or whatever. If it, this one doesn't have haste, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. So do we offer this? Uh, we can go... What about... We can go Night Runner and have a hasty Relic Robber next turn that might surprise him. But I think we... Yeah, Amulet would have been a great draw. I think we could we can go and we can offer the Relic Robber for the Vine Gecko and say that's a fair trade, right? This is going to get outrageous in a in a good kicker deck. So let's uh, let's let's offer. This is a premium card, but so is that Vine Gecko in blue green. So let's see what Pac Man is in for. Snap block is what Pac Man is in for. Well, between the Cleric of the Chilled Dre Depths and drawing the chill, Chilling Trap, clearly we need this. All right, everyone. Chill. Now we will uh, drop this Night Runner. Pass the turn, and technically next turn have Glacial Grasp and an Unkicked into the Royal, if we really want to use that to get our Night Runner through. We'll see, though. I had Canyon Jerboa in one deck and never really got to see how it was going to do. We never really, I never really got to even try it, but word on the street is it's not great. Maybe, like, surprisingly not great. Hey, look, we can use our Hellion to get back our wizard creature land. That's awesome. But I'm in for Royal. Uh, although Night Runner only lets you do it this turn, so it doesn't even really matter. Like we're not we're not getting in. Like we can wait and try to set it up for next turn. I think I'd rather just Hellion here, though. Hellion, pull our land, have a nice large creature to be threatening with, and then kind of save our grasping, chilling, roiling after we get our creature base down. Down to four lands, though, so need a fifth to cast this, but I like our chances. There it is. And I think I just like Wizard Pass here. Keep building the board and then again use all of our interaction next turn and then follow with some reload. If we find a land, we can literally do all these next turn. It needs to be an island. We got four, three blue spells, but it's possible. The Beatles! Yeah, this is interesting. 
Uh, we can really foil double blocks. I think we send in the 4-3 and the 4-5 and into the royal any double blocks. Hmm, maybe I don't care. Yeah, we'll just chilling trap in this case. Now I like uh, I like trying to use our tricks to gain uh, board control. Like if 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 we had been able to two for one there, great. Like any block on the wizard, and we can punish it with at the at least the chilling trap, and in a case of a double block with the end of the royal. So I didn't mind uh, shipping without flying in that case. Here we can leave the glacial grasp to handle something next turn, but I think I just like plundering here. Why not? One, a two, a three seems good to me. Plunder into plunder. But we get a nice turn first. I think we're gonna... Well, maybe we can rock slide sorcerer first and really start getting value on all the stuff we're gonna cast. Keep holding off on casting all of our interaction because I want it to uh, do sweet stuff. Um, and we can go... Sorcerer will make the wizard fly. That seems fine. Then we even have an unkicked royal to punish a double block on the Hellion if we want to do that. Uh, mana up here suggests maybe uh, Pac-Man might be doing some uh, spland splashing, in which case we might be up against protection from, you know, the, uh, the white land that gives you a protection spell. So that's a consideration, but I'm going to go Sorcerer. And then we also have Duelist. So that's another way we can approach the uh, double block situation. I think I'm going to risk it. If they want to use resources on taking out the Hellion at this point, it probably means our Sorcerer is uh, in better shape. But this worries me because he didn't take this last time and... He's taking this double block this time with this mana open, so I'm thinking this might be punished on our on our side. Um, but also with six, I'm going to try it with a duelist. There's no need to use a royal here when um, the sorcerer trigger doesn't do anything, and the duelist still does the job of preventing lethal. Another sweeper. <laughs> I was ready for uh, eight mana sweeper number two. Hey, look, I got somebody with Duelist. Finally, a little payback. Everybody's been getting me with this. Understandable ambush there. Wizard is super scary. Sorcerer. Seven mana lets us into the royal and glacial grasp. So we're going to do that. Let's kick the falconer back. Might even grasp down the chill and eh, we'll I'll just do a beetle. Although wind wizard is interesting too. I ain't gonna do this though. And send all and uh, they have to block the hellion. Hmm. My bad. I think we'll be okay. Sorry I missed lethal, but looks good from here. Add 
do my hair toss. Check my right. nails. Baby, how you feeling? It's really hard for me to see into the royal as a two mana spell. My brain sees that as a four mana spell. Time for Wizard Lizard. David says, good luck, hee <laughs> hee, suggesting that maybe Wizard Lizard has a killer deck. Let's find out. Oops. There it is. All right, I'm on the cusp of winning the week. I want the week. Hmm, we're definitely keeping. I'm just debating whether I'm playing Wizard Land. And I, and I think I am. I'm not going to be greedy. Oh, here comes the flood. Of course, turn one crab. Always got to be a turn one crab. Well... Flood meme was redeemed twice, so I'll do the second part. We will say goodbye to flesh and blood. Oh, I missed, uh, complete, complete. I'm very late on this for Krauser, but... Point is, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> Whatever. Should I scoop? I mean, come on. Do you stack the deck? <laughs> David, you warned me, but unless Wizard, unless Lizard has 12 Ruin Crabs, this is a little unlikely. Welcome to I, I don't think I can win. It's fruit here. It's dark and He has more than two? How many, how many did we see? I guess it's not three. Yeah, you know, I don't even mean to, uh, like, I, I'm not one for early scooping, but our deck cannot beat Ruin Crab into Ruin Crab, and it's a boring thing to watch happen. Next. <laughs> that was dumb, Lizard. How many of those did you have? I mean, uh, don't feel sad for me. I'm going to win this week. I've already denied you the store. I've already saved my hair. I'm having a blast. This is great. Also, it was so clearly a loss, I didn't have to even endure it. I just accepted the loss and moved on. Next, Zori. We already friends, yes. Yeah, there was no there was no no need to play that out. You you all understand what happens there? 
Lizard plays three more lands and we lose. <laughs> That's it. That's what happens. Yeah, we passed that. I knew you had that. That's the rare, the kicker rare. Uh, the meme machine has been used up. Do I play your LGS bat meme? I don't think so. Zori, you out there? How are we doing, Zori? Do I need to move on to the next? Come back to Zori? You're not, you're not seeing my challenge? I don't know what happened there. Let's try again. Do you have multiple accounts? Do I have the wrong Zori? Oh, maybe I screwed it up. Hold on. I, oh, I, I, I might have used the wrong... No, I challenged you direct. Hmm. Yeah, you can send to me. Let's try it that way. I don't know why it's not working, though. Yeah, already friends. I thought we had it. So close. Ah, tech. Oops. Ah, I got you. Yes, there is a... There we go. There's a Discord link, but there's also a gauntlet. Like, is it gauntlet? Like, there's a... Link to gauntlet information too, somewhere. Yes, we'll keep and again have the question of wizard land or not. This time we have three lands to go on though. I'm gonna be greedy enough to hold this time. I'm not going to run the duelist out as a flash 1-1. One, one. It's really about the ETB ability more than anything else on that card. Just got a ping from Mr. Schneider. He's in chat. You all can say hi to Jay. We're going to have him on when we're done with our gauntlet here. Jay Schneider is the progenitor, the designer of the famous Sly deck that changed the changed the game of competitive magic, really. Uh, competitive magic was all about long game control, and Jay came along and said, what about an endless stream of small red creatures with all of my mana every turn. And it turned out, hey, that works. And we have Jay on sometimes to talk standard. Haven't had him on in a while and excited to have him back. Now, what are we doing here? We have Chilling Trap, but not for a card. We have, we can kick a bubble snare and then, um, and then ask the question. I think I like attack. And either let us have it, or we're gonna. I'm gonna uh, chilling trap you and take one for one for a uh, one drop. So let's just send in the runner. We're gonna put the vanguard first and go for the trap. 
Actually, we can go for the duelist and trap after we have a wizard, right? Let's duelist and, and squid here. And then if this if this isn't enough somehow, if uh, Zori has something back, we can chilling trap to save. Spark Mage is a nice grab. Take out that squid. Two for one. We, this is, we passed a Spark Mage in our excellent pack one, pick one. Our, our opening pack had some gas, and this was among them. Or at least a copy of this. We don't know if that's the copy, but it seems likely. All right, I just like uh, playing the wizard here, but we get to send in a Night Runner first. I almost made a huge mistake. You should, when you have a card like Night Runner that allows you to play lands on the Saboteur. Uh, on connecting against Oppo, don't play your land. <laughs> Try to get through first, and then uh, if it's a land, you get to play it. You can even send in the duelist and have the, the chilling trap, but that's silly. There's no reason for that. And there you go. There's the land I almost blew playing, but we do get our wizard. That was nice, getting value out of the runner. Just a land, but it took it off the top of our library. Now maybe we draw a spell instead, you know? Still a card draw. Medea, are you still around? I'm curious if you like the red build at this point, or if you'd still go back and play mono blue. I think I like the red cards. I think they're they've proven worth the tax on our mana. Take that and snare one. Probably just snare this. I didn't need to do that first, I suppose. Again, I should just be attacking, but I knew for sure I was going to snare the Grotag bug catcher, so I just did it. And look, I screwed up my own... I did it right last time and then messed it up this time. Nicely, though, it still at least draws it. Like, we got... It, it's a not a terrible mistake because we still got it off the top of our library to set up for another one, but I... I, I right after patting myself on the back for not making the mistake, I then make it. Uh, do we want to snare the Spark Mage? I'm going to say no. We have a fine clock right now. We're winning this race, so let's make Zori show us something else and snare that. As far as punts go, it almost doesn't matter, because it, it, it really just... The, the, yes, we, should, we could have a, an island in our hand... But that's really the only difference. The thing I'm really happy about is that we got the land off the top of our library. So while a technical mistake, it is like almost, almost meaningless from a game impact standpoint. Like where it will become meaningful is if we specifically draw our looter wizard and we lose the ability to loot that spare land from our hand don't yell at me d i'll time you out i don't mind you punting me i don't like being yelled at All right, we're going to grasp this and get in with the runner again. All right, into the royal. We'll save that. Probably kick it on their turn. Of all the records, 
Of all the sports records, I think D's timeout record on this channel is the safest. Oh, right. Never mind. That was a punt I would embrace. That was just me screwing up. Yep. I was thinking somehow I had that available. Um, do we chill that? No, I think we just take this too. And if they come up with another blocker, we get to bubble snare that. And if not, we will one mana bubble snare the sneak and keep it down. Let's see what we draw. Yeah, there's a lot of them that keep them available. For I've almost gotten used to the red uh, this ability being until next turn because they've they've switched a lot towards that. So I guess in my head I was thinking until next turn. They probably just thought it was too powerful this next turn, which makes some sense. It'd be really good if you didn't have to use it right away, but not broken, so it was possible. Anyway, yeah, really, it's really screwed up by not uh, casting the Into the Royal there. I love that I have an absolute awesome legit punt and D is timed out and can't express it. Ha ha, D, I punted and you can't say so. <laughs> just teasing, friend. You know I am. Uh, let's see. We want to go... We can use the Chilling Trap to... to kill something with the runner. But we still draw a card off of this. I kind of like Bubble Snare, Catcher, Send in Runner, and leave back Duelist to threaten Fissure Wizard if they don't block with it. We do have a Skitter Sneak coming to get us. At six life, though, we could even take both of these and technically be at one. All right. Remember, Ryan, this turn and this turn only. There we go. And now I like uh, Wind Rider Wizard play Island have Chilling Trap, and here's where here's finally where I'm actually punished. If we had that one extra land in hand, we'd be able to loot the wizard, loot it away to the wizard. Nice draw though, Chilling Trap plus the wizard means we have a lot of options to not die this turn. Wow, I was like, we still need to draw stuff. I feel so far behind here. And look at this. Well, hopefully we have the tools here between the chilling trap and the blockers to not straight die. But it should be interesting. So we want to go for sure duelist on wizard and just take that trade. Well, not, not for sure. I'm going to line some stuff up and see how it looks, but we're going to Chilling Trap the, I think, the Minotaur and just take that to take one from that and then trade here. And we take four total, three and one and trade, trade and hopefully find some stuff 
to uh, to win with after that. So I think this is our only choice, really. Yeah, we need to draw well off this. If we draw a card, we're just discarding it. It's this is just pure chance. Um, so I'm gonna decline. Whatever. Yeah, really. Like I guess, do we have graveyard? Any graveyard interactions? Is it useful to, for us to have stuff in the graveyard? Because that's the only question. Do we want to put the top card of our library in our graveyard for any reason? And um, if we don't have anything that likes the graveyard, we should just play towards possibly getting decked and not do that. Well, that's a good draw. If we find another spell off the top, oh, oh I missed. Oh, I missed. Um, what? Oh, because it came back. Yeah, yeah, that was great. All right, looks like we lost this one. Can we do anything? If we play the Falconer, we have a block on one, but then we're looking at three lethal. There's nothing we can do about three lethal. So, uh, although this uh, argument for picking up that Cinderclasm or whatever, we could survive on a Cinderclasm and a Falconer, but not to be. All right, once again, after a strong start from me, chat has brought it back to yet another even Steven. Yeah, I guess Bale, uh, that would have, uh, Vale would have bought us a turn. I don't think it would have bought us two turns though. Good game, Zori. Felt like we got a little flooded there. I mean, if you look at Zori's, you know, uh, like did what we could, but come on, Zori hit, Five lands exactly? I guess six. Pitched one to the, the lizard. But uh, hitting and staying on exactly five lands in a red-black deck is tough to beat. Good game, Zori. Could not handle your perfect ratio there. I was doing all right, but I could not win an attrition battle with 27 lands. All right, final challenger. Who's last? Jank in the tank. All right, I still want this week. I like my deck a lot. It's had some bad matchups and questionable draws, but this one looks good. All right, Jank, you better bring it because I'm liking the look of this one. It's like D doesn't know who has the weapons here. So, squid or amulet? Squid starts getting in. Do we want to play geyser mage for no value next turn? If so, we might want the amulet for the mage to trigger the, for that to trigger. But I, I think we go squid and then next turn attack and play amulet then.
numbers like the amulet. Fair enough. Maybe I'm being greedy trying to get there here, but... I'm going to do it this way. In general, when I have saboteurs in my deck, which is to say those red creatures that have a benefit when I connect with combat damage against my opponent, I like to offer trades because I want to keep the board as clear as possible knowing that I have those types of cards in my deck. Here we have to ask whether or not we care enough about this, you know, like, are we just going to Geyser Mage for low value to put a counter on the amulet and get on board? I'm going to say yes. I think it's a little greedy to go for a kicked Geyser Mage here because we have Falconer for sure that's going to put another counter on. Then Plunder that's going to put another counter on. We'll get three counters on this thing and draw a bunch of cards. And the fact that we didn't kick this will be a distant memory if we just uh, continue to play our spells out. It also, you know, threatens to block and attack into the Root Grazer, which could really power Jank towards some big stuff here. The, you know, you don't get to go fetching lands out of your library or anything, but you do get to move your cards down, uh, get your lands down faster. Guess we get to find out if the Jerboa is any good. Creates an attack here. We're going to get a second counter on the amulet when we drop a falconer, though. And that is earmarked for the Jerboa. Or, you know, again, we can try and get the Root Grazer, too. Uh, I should have attacked before bothering with the falconer, but it doesn't change the fact that I do want to offer this for the Root Grazer. They're not going to take it. Yeah, that's true. I, it was dangerous for to to uh, to do that. I, I kind of got lucky. That was probably a mistake. Forgetting that this can activate uh, on their turn as well. You could argue that was a risk. It's hard to say it was a punt. It was a poorly calculated risk. Okay, this is nice. I'm going to go for uh, Sorcerer, Land, Amulet on Root Grazer, and that'll be real good for us. They didn't have it before. And I think they would play it on their turn, you know. It was another chance that that wouldn't work, but since it worked last time, it seemed uh, very unlikely that that was not going to work this time. Plunder is fine. Like, one, two, we are at six already, so we get to plunder for five, find a land, put a counter on the amulet, and ping the Blight Blade. Jerboa has not been great. I almost, uh, I, I let it have the chance to be great by not thinking through a turn, but got lucky. Actually, we can take out the Raptor if we want as well, like... Oh, maybe we go Diviner, kill Blightblade. And then next turn, get another counter on Am... Hmm. A lot of things we could do here, right? There's the Plunder Amulet play that'll get us... That'll get us two damage. We can actually kill the, kill the Raptor. But I think we just play the Diviner, kill the Blightblade, and then next turn do Plunder... Uh, plunder, yeah, amulet. So, 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 so. 
Thank you for the sub. I'm not going to offer the sorcerer, but we'll send the geyser mage. We'll happily trade that off. Breeden, five months. Thanks, Breeden. Amulet threatens one toughness. That's decent. I don't know if they have any, but, you know, it's, uh, it's something. Jank may be thinking race is the only option here. The race doesn't currently favor Jank from what I'm looking at, but I don't know what's in Jank's hand. There you go. That's pretty good. Um, we have at least we're going to get a card out of this. Interesting that Jank's not going for this rock slide sorcerer, which is also a big annoyance. But maybe they're thinking in order to race, gotta uh, get the flyer dead so that this raptor can do work. Makes some sense. On that front. I like a uh, a block here with the chilling trap ready to punish. Uh, into the royal is fine, but we'll just uh, take out the raptor, I think. That well, looks like I screwed up somehow, but I'm going to keep going here. I think I'm in a fine, fine place, even if I screwed up. I thought the Jerbo was going to die. I, I didn't do the math right and thought it was already dead is the thing. I'm going to go with the Night Runner, though. All right. Well... Some loose play at the end was not enough to cost me a game. And I did manage to win the week. Good games, chat. Good draft, everybody. Nice decks out there. Thanks to everybody who participated. Queen, if you're still here, especially you, thank you. I know you're not feeling great about where your game is at, and it can be really hard uh, if you're not feeling uh, that, you know, it can be hard if you're struggling and really working on learning this complicated game to have the, 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 the will and the interest and the willingness to come play on stream like that. So, yeah. Thank you, JM. Appreciate it. Yeah, courage. That's a good word, David. Queen showed some courage today, and I want to honor that because she's trying to get out of like the 30% of win rate, and we're trying to help her get up out of there. And so to come play on stream is a, is a daunting thing for someone struggling with their game to do. So I just wanted to tip the cap to Queen Dragon on that one. And to everybody who played and to my awesome mods who coordinated this, thank you, Mama. Thank you, Hat. Thank you, David. Hat couldn't be here today, but I appreciate all the help I get from my mods on making this awesome event happen. I kind of just have this community that wants to make cool things happen, and, and I don't have to do much. It's been really great to just have this awesome Friday event and have people helping me make it happen. So... Thanks to everybody who made this happen. Thanks to all the participants. And thanks to our YouTube friends who I'm now going to bid farewell. Bye, YouTube.